that you open up our gates of understanding, gates of salvation, and gates of sanctity that we can try to understand you more and more and more. Father, this very morning we desire also feast and feed from the fountain of life, from the bread of life. For in us there is no life, but when you are in us, you that hidden manna, you the white stone to receive. All life is fullness. And our spirits go and our souls and our bodies are preserved. For you, the man of the man in us, you are working out your ways. Father, let the wings of the spirit of the living God flow in our midst and blow in our midst victorious. And calm every storm that could be affecting our souls. That then we shall hear from you. For the harvest is much, but yet the labor has been little. But also read ourselves to you and ask and to receive us where we are this very morning. In the name of this Christ, we pray and we believe. Hallelujah. It's wonderful. Praise is wonderful. Honor. Allow me at this very minute to also acknowledge the presence of our Archdeacon uh, Array, Tata, Canon Venerable, Nende Chijambu, Namibis, and also our Tata Reverend, Tata Chiwanuka, Alfstaka, Sosio Namibis, the Odinan, in this site. Uh, Tata Simon Laine uh, Matovu and the Chief Warden Tata Kisan Imboa, uh, the leader for the service today, and the Spirit of the Living God. Thank you very much. Uh, Mercy, the Blessed Worship Team, the Organist, and the Media Team, and all of us who are viewing us from wherever you are viewing us, we are honored and humbled. And here at St. Luke's Church of Uganda, don't take it for granted that you always want to be with us and fellowship with us this very, very morning. By name, I'm Jackson Setuba, and I'm uh, delighted to minister before you this very morning. And it's quite a privilege that the living God has given me, me a vessel of weakness, and he has allowed me also to draw from the fountains of life and also speak to us this very morning. And I just ask that we allow, receive this very word this very morning. From the scripture that we've read, and also to add on uh, uh, the passage that comes from Galatians chapter 5, that's what I, I, I will be reading from. Uh, from verses, from verses 13, you allow me to read from the English and version, uh, saying that for you were called freedom, brothers only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. The very important words in the next verses saying, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. Other versions say they contend against the desires of the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Then he mentions them. Uh, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, adultery, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. I warn you as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not take portion. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is, he mentions love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Hallelujah. Amen. At this very, very moment, as we understand the things that are happening, I, I also uh, re echo from the same passage and uh, I mean, in Psalms uh, 47. I mean, this world is full of cruelty to the things that we are seeing uprising, for the storms that we are seeing that are uprising, a lot of killings, a lot of bloodshed of innocent people in the so under condition of Bijambia. Thing, uh, people who are heartless that have gone ahead and even uh, announced that we are coming 
if you get prepared for your death, you can imagine. All these things that are happening, sure, even in the past days, they happen. And they ought to happen because we are nearing the end of times. But then Apostle Paul told, talks about them as temporal afflictions. And he beseeches us to focus on the things that are set above, from thus and from west, where comes our glory ever. Today, this very morning, ladies and gentlemen, I desire to speak about walking by the Spirit. The passage, according to, uh, to St. John in Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 5, tells us that we are born, that us who are born by water and spirit are the only ones that shall see the kingdom of God. And when it mentions about walking by the Spirit, he is literally telling us that there are two, uh, I should say, dimensions or, 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 or uh, kind of authorities that would want to take charge of our bodies and want to take charge of our souls and enforce their agendas in this universe. Not forgetting that we were formed by God in His likeness, and that is His Spirit, because He is Spirit, only for one big commission to till and dress the garden, and that is His presence, to establish the kingdom of God in the universe. And ladies and gentlemen, I desire to tell us that this entire Bible, the book is that is written, in itself, the word that I've spoken of, it is about the kingdom of God, it being established in this universe that, was full, that is full of wickedness. And how are we going to do that if we do not pick then our uh, whispers and echoes from above, from the one, the master, the one who owns our masterpiece, and the one who has commissioned us? We can only do that through being led by the Spirit. Being led by the Spirit as in opposition to being led by the flesh. When we talk about the flesh, we are not just talk about flesh, uh, uh, blood, uh, flesh and blood, but we are mentioning about the old nature that we had before we came into this new life of Christ leading us. We are talking about that sinful nature. The man that is uh, putting on incorruptible kind of nature and character that falls to the things that have been mentioned uh, in the passage like enmity, Sexual human rights is strife, there are all these things that we see that none of us desires to ever happen to us or even those that are around us. And now, how are we to be led by the Spirit? Why is it even important? Why does He encourage us to walk by the Spirit? There is the element of walking in the Spirit, but for this morning we shall talk about walking uh, by the Spirit or being led by uh, the Spirit. If we really say, that we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that then everything became new. When we get born again, or we have a rebirth, or we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior to move with Him in these end times of our lifetime, we receive a new spirit, as Ezekiel chapter 6 tells us, and also a new heart. A heart that is not of stone, but a heart that is of flesh. For sure, the things that we are seeing that we do not desire, the storms and the waves that are blowing us and shaking the battle of nerves, are all caused by those hearts that are still of stone. But when we get born again, He gives us a new heart, a heart of flesh that desires to do His will in this universe. But then one thing we must also note is that we are given new spirits, yes. We are given new hearts, yes, but we are not given a new mind. And then the mind is against your flesh, your body, your soul, and to the spirit. It is from this mind that you perceive what the spirit of the living God is saying. Then it affects your spirit. And then your spirit dictates the other things your body is yet uh, to do. And then if this mind we are not concerned about what comes and what works out. Surely, they will be taken over by the priests of this world. The Bible tells us in the Corinthians chapter 2 verses that he is the priest of the world. That would wish the believers and cause unbelief in them. And cause us to invest much in the flesh to follow the dictates of the flesh, which then its works are the ones that we mentioned here. But then the fruits of the Holy Spirit can only come to us if we are led by the Spirit of the living God. Why do we need to be led by the Spirit of the living God? Because we are not our very own. 
And it's not the flesh that should take charge over us. It's not the devil should take charge over us. But God himself who commissioned us, who formed us in his likeness and told us that let them go and have dominion in this earth. It is from him that we ought to get what next steps we are supposed to take. In this world of a lot of confusion, a lot of hatred, a lot of glory, a lot of love, a lot of uh, every storm you can mention it, how are we going to make through, how are we going to overcome? By us getting back to him and allowing him by his spirit to lead our every step. That then, when we yield to his spirit, to his principles, to his words, to his whispers, to his echoes, to his instructions, then we obey. Brings the fruits of life, unlike the works of the flesh. And then he tells us in his word that those who are born by the spirit overcome. The same passage in chapter 3. That those who are born by the spirit become spirit, those born by the flesh become flesh. But those who are born by the spirit overcome this world. Ladies and gentlemen, for all these things that the devil is throwing at us, he knows he has an agenda to cause to, be, to, to make many souls at that time to go and also be judged as he is judged. He is very jealous, he knows that his time came and he was judged already. But for us, we are given mercy. That we can ask for forgiveness, confess of all our weaknesses, and allow him to take charge of us and then. Uh, we can live a life that glorifies uh, a, a God and also does not go to gratify uh, the flesh. That is one of the reasons why we need to be led by the Spirit. Because He knows what the future holds. He knows what the end of the enemy is. He knows how everything is. But He can give us uh, a power in all our capabilities, in all our weaknesses, and we can stand and overcome in, uh, this, in these times of a lot of uh, turmoil. How are some of the ways we can be led by the Spirit of the living God? This is one of the confusions and one of the things that we always have every day asking how can I be led by the Spirit of the Lord. In the first place, we don't see Him. Yet you're putting on a body that desires to see things, to touch things, to feel things. But you don't see Him. Yet, He expects you not to quench Him, to listen unto Him, to obey His instructions and move that you can overcome in this earth. One of the things is the first place is becoming born again. Because by this you become born by His Spirit. Then you allow him to dictate every step that he has, is going to uh, 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 enable you to do in every instruction, wherever you are placed, wherever you are doing, in whatever position you are. And this, this everyday yielding to the Spirit of the Living God means one thing, and that is death to the flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, we can try so much in our own making to put off last. To put off that too much desire of money, to put off too much and, and, and that too much desire of, of power and authority, and all these things that we mentioned those are the works of the flesh, but in our own selves we cannot, because we are made out of corruptible, we are made out of corruptible material, which is the flesh. And when we came to this universe, there is a ruler. Everything that is done, everything that you see, there is a force that drives it. The question is, what spirit or what force is driving the motives? you're doing. But when we constantly die to the flesh, crucify the flesh, we offer our bodies as Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 2 tells us that offer yourselves as a living sacrifice. Because this is the acceptable and honorable uh, uh, form of sacrifice or oh, spiritual worship and it desires of us. This is the thing. Dying to the flesh and becoming alive to Christ. It is not something that is easy but it's something that is of the mind that you make every decision and you say, Father, by my own power I will not live, but I will live by your will. And you constantly surrender. When the devil says A, you say, but my father says B, you surrender. It is a, a, a struggle that whenever you wake up, the rest begins. When the day closes, the rest ends and that finishing line is the beginning of a new race. And when next day comes again, you start off with that journey. Surrender, crucify the flesh. I allow Jesus Christ to come and come through. When I look at the pattern of the tabernacle uh, that Moses was given to build, which was a, 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 a shadow of our spiritual worship that God desires of us, after they have entered the, the first curtain or the first gate, the first thing that they, 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 they would find would be the bronze altar, which shows them that every person who comes to Jesus Christ, the first thing you have, have, have not appreciated the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has died at the cross. We also ought to surrender. And then you move forward to the Brazilian altar. 
the person number, where there is the washing of the hands and of the feet before you proceed to the next phases of uh, the holy place and then the holy of holies to meet the holy one. Implying what? That when you meet that blessed water, the washing was signifying of the water, which is the word of God, which renews our mind. fact that every time you make a decision, you pick reference from the word of God. And when you pick reference from the word of God, because it is spirit and life, then the spirit can give you instructions and the power and the will to move and do as the Lord pleases. Hallelujah. Amen. And by then, it's very dangerous when we quench the spirit of the living God. When he gives us instructions and we know what then, as born again Christians, we can never overcome, my brother, uh, uh, be doomed uh, uh, for disaster. And one of our, now the honor lies with us to allow the Holy Spirit to express himself through us by the continual re uh, reading of the word is one of the ways we can, we can crucify the flesh. By continual reading of the word and knowing every aspect of our lives, what is the instruction of God, what is the principle of God, what is the word of God telling us. Such that when temptations arise, when times of weaknesses come, when the devil attacks, you have a response point for which you can draw your power to move and be allowed to uh, uh, lead by the Spirit of the Living God. Then, thirdly, it takes obedience to walk by the Spirit of the Living God. We say initially being born again, and secondly, crucifying your flesh is a daily struggle every now and then. In other words, killing the person that you've got. Maybe you cut your throat or something. No. But you suffocate the desires of the flesh that produce the works that we've seen in Russia chapter 5. Then when you allow him and you obey the instructions, the Holy Spirit, uh, when you to him, he starts now producing his fruits out of you, which we have mentioned here, to be love, to be kindness, to be goodness, to be faithfulness, to be gentleness, self-control, and all these things. Ladies and gentlemen, this cannot come to us until yield ourselves continually to the Holy Spirit to lead us. It's one of the things that we are honoring and appreciating the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and he did at the cross. When he gave up his life, when he came and put on this mortal being, he came into this life, put on flesh and blood to die for you and me to pay the price of the One of the ways we can appreciate is by continually also surrendering to it. Then we believe in that way. In the renewing of the minds, in offering our bodies as a living sacrifice, it is what God calls acceptable spiritual worship. From then, He can give us the power to overcome all the challenges of this universe. We can mention them. I know exactly what kind of kind of challenge you are going through. It could be at work. It could be in your leadership. It could be at church. It could be at in, in, in your ministry. It could be in your family. It could be in your marriage. It could be in your finances. It could be with your children. It could be with your education. Whatever the case is, have you allowed the Spirit of the Living God to pick instructions from Him, obey instructions, and move as He dictates? Or you have just allowed the body to take itself in a direction that it so desires? The Bible tells us that whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. And whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit overcomes the world. But then the fruits of God that are made by the flesh is death. In these times, one of the things I encourage us this very morning, not to put a blind eye. What the, 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 everything is happening around us. And what our onus is in these very times. But we take that step. That that we receive him as a part of that Savior, to allow him also by his spirit to lead our every uh, step. For them, we can overcome in this world. That's why the singer says that in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. As he sacrifices himself at the cross, like this is now not, not, not the actual going to the, to the wooden cross, but in times of crucifying the flesh, as I've also uh, told us earlier, then he can find rest beyond the river. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Because God is coming for a church that is clean, that is pure, that is righteous from that day to reward us. He will not reward you, he will not move you closer, he will not accept your worship if you are still living by the dictates of the flesh and not living by the dictates of the spirit from which he wants us to draw life. May the good Lord give us understanding that every now and then we will crucify the flesh and allow the spirit of living God to work in us, that we shall be dead our sinful nature, but alive to Christ alone, the hope of glory that rests in us. 
Thank you. 